Hello and welcome to the Advanced Software Architecture course. My name is Imad Hamoda. This is a lecture on architectural styles, part one. In this lecture, we will take a tour through widely used architectural styles, illustrating some of their main properties. We will briefly review how styles are classified and how they are documented. Finally, we will browse through an example catalog of styles. According to Merriam-Webster, a style is a particular way in which something is done, created, or performed, a particular form or design of something, or a way of behaving or of doing things. Let's consider the informal example of building architectural styles. A building architectural style is characterized by the features that make a building or other structure notable and historically identifiable. A style may include such elements as form, method of construction, building materials, and regional character. One could, for example, distinguish between the different styles you see on the slide. An important aspect of styles is the quality properties offered by the style reflecting its benefits and limitations. On the slide, you see two different building architectural styles. On the left, a traditional Berber house that takes the form of a large pit dug in the ground. And on the right, houses with angular roof. The first style is mainly used in the desert. It allows the house to stay cool and protect it from sandy winds. However, this style performs poorly in the case of heavy rain. The other style is used mainly in mountainous areas, protecting the house from cold weather and snowfalls. However, the style might be less practical in case of extreme heat. Another important aspect of styles is the coordination, alignment, and coherence of its elements. One could observe that the dressing styles on the slide represent a well-coordinated, aligned, and coherent set of clothware. However, would you consider the pair of shoes shown on the slide aligned with these dressing styles? In software design, an architectural style is a specialization of element and relation types, together with a set of constraints on how they can be used. An architectural style expresses a fundamental structural organization schema for software systems. It provides a set of predefined subsystems, specifies their responsibilities, and includes rules and guidelines for organizing the relationships between them. The set of rules and constraints provide a vocabulary or metaphor for component and connector types, define a set of topological constraints that determine the compositional rules of the elements, include information on how the system behaves, provide guidelines on how to apply the style, define semantics of the applications constructed using the style, and act as performance analysis tools of systems built in that style. Here is an example architectural style that you most probably have heard of or experimented with, client server. This architectural style is typically used to manage computers or processes on a network. You certainly have heard of file servers, print servers, web servers, or mail servers. All those systems are instances of the client server architectural style. Here is a question for reflection. What is the difference between a tactic and an architectural style? As we will see, tactics are elementary design decisions that may act as building blocks of styles. Towards the end of this lecture series, this distinction will be made clear. Styles are named collection of design decisions that have been used to understand existing systems, document proven best practices, and build new systems. An understanding of architectural styles 
provides several benefits. The most important benefit is that they provide a common language. They also provide opportunities for conversations that are technology agnostic. This facilitates a high level of conversation that is inclusive of best practices and principles without getting into specifics. For example, by using architectural styles, you can talk about client server versus model view controller. In order to better distinguish between different architectural styles and facilitate their application, styles have been organized into catalogs of different categories. For instance, by organizing them according to their key focus area. Other classification criteria include the dominant type of the elements of the style and the effect of the style when it is applied to a concrete design. The textbook organizes architectural styles according to their dominant type of its elements, distinguishing between module styles, component and connector styles, and allocation styles. Bushman describes a classification scheme that organizes best practices according to granularity of abstraction, functionality, and structural principles. The granularity of abstraction separates design best practices into three categories, architectural frameworks, design patterns, and idioms. Other classification schemes have organized styles by discipline, such as software engineering styles versus organization management styles, or by their applicability domain, such as real-time systems versus distributed systems. In this lecture, we will consider the first classification scheme. Several different formats have been used in the literature for describing styles, and no single format has achieved widespread acceptance. However, there is broad agreement on the types of things that a style should contain. Generally, an architectural style establishes a relationship between context, which is a recurring common situation in the world that gives rise to a problem. Within the identified context, a specific architectural design problem describes the concrete design challenge that should be addressed. And the solution part is a generic scheme to resolve the concrete problem balancing the different design forces within the context. The solution part is typically determined and described by set of element types, for example, data repositories, processes, and objects, set of interaction mechanisms or connectors, for example, method calls, events, or message bus, topological layout of the components, and set of semantic constraints covering topology, element behavior, and interaction mechanisms. This context problem solution form constitutes a template for documenting a style. Here is a question for reflection. Can you think of other relevant documentation sections for architectural styles? Think, for example, about the consequences of applying a style in terms of the results, side effects, and trade-offs caused by using the style, or a set of related styles that have some relationship with the style at hand. This is the end of the Architectural Styles Lecture Part 1. Thank you for watching.